Let's begin by finding the range of the function defined by the rule f of x equals 2x plus 1 corresponding to the domain set A. Because A is a small little finite set consisting of just three members, let's use the arrow diagram approach here. So my first set, set A, that's the domain of this function is drawn here. Next, co-domain of this function is set of all reals consisting of infinitely many members. So I've represented them by dots. And I have my function defined from A to R. Right? Now, when x is equal to 1, f of x is equals to 2 into 1 plus 1 that gives you 3 that means 1 gets mapped to 3 when x is equals to 2 f of x is 2 into 2 plus 1 that gives you 5 so 2 gets mapped to 5 then when x is 3 f of x is 2 into 3 plus 1 that means 3 gets mapped to 7 that's how f is mapping the domain members to codomain members yes of course out of all the infinitely many real numbers in the codomain 3 is the image of 1 under f, 5 is the image of 2 under f, 7 is the image of 3 under f. Set of all images is called the range, so I know range of f is the set consisting of 3, 5 and 7. What did you understand from this question? That f is actually the function which is working as a machine. So when you are inputting 1, 2 and 3 inside the machine, the outputs you are getting are 3, 5 and 7. Got it? So corresponding to the domain which is set A, the range is coming out to be this. Cool. Now, I want to find the range of the same function defined by the rule f of x equals 2x plus 1, but this time corresponding to the domain which is all the whole numbers. Again, because set of whole numbers is a discrete set, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. Let's again use the arrow diagram approach only. So my domain is represented here, 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. And this is my co-domain, which is set of all reals. My f is defined from this domain to this co-domain. Okay, let's look at the mapping. When x is 0, f of x is 2 into 0 plus 1, that is 1. So 0 gets mapped to 1. When x is 1, f of x is 2 into 1 plus 1, that is 3, so 1 gets mapped to 3. When x is 2, f of x is 2 into 2 plus 1, so 2 gets mapped to 5. When x is 3, then f of x is 2 into 3 plus 1, which is 7, so 3 gets mapped to 7 and so on. So what can you see? You can actually generalize the pattern of the mapping here but because of course there are infinitely many members in the domain. So you can't keep drawing the arrows, but in here in this situation, it's very simple to draw out the pattern of the mapping. See, the outputs that you are getting, out of all the infinitely many members in the codomain, 1 is the output, 3 is the output, 5 is the output, 7 is the output, after that 9 will be output, then 11, then 13 and so on. So what can you see? That out of all the infinitely many real numbers in the codomain, only the odd natural numbers are being obtained as images. So the range of this function is only the odd natural numbers. Got it? I can say range of f is the set of 2n plus 1 where n is a natural number. In fact, I should write 2n minus 1. Okay. Any odd natural number looks like this, isn't it? That means what is happening over here? f is like a machine. When you are inputting whole numbers inside the machine, the output is coming out to be odd natural numbers. Yes, machine is the same. Next, I want to find the range of the same function, but this time corresponding to a different domain. This time the domain is no more a discrete set or a finite set. It's actually a continuous piece of the real line. So I can no more use my arrow diagram approach to find the range. I will be using the graphical approach to find the range of this function. Because this is non-negative reals, my domain is set of non-negative reals. So I will be drawing the graph of this function corresponding to the non-negative x-axis. How? By plotting few points which will lie on this graph. How? By actually picking up few real numbers from the domain as x and computing f of x corresponding to them. So if I take x as 0, f of x is 2 into 0 plus 1 which gives you 1. That means 0, 1 is a point lying on the graph. Further next you get 0. 0.5, 2. Then next you get 1, 3. Then next you get 1.5, Further next you get 2, 5. And when you join these points, this is the graph of the function f of x equals 2x plus 1 corresponding to the non-negative x-axis being the domain. Yes, so now examine the nature of the graph as it is moving from bottom to top. See, as it is moving from bottom to top, it is actually sweeping all the real numbers from 1 
to infinity. Can you see that? Yes. That means the range of this function is all real numbers to the right of 1 including 1. That means all real numbers lying in closed 1 open infinity interval. Got it? So now I have the same machine 2x plus 1. I'm inputting all the non-negative reals inside the machine. The output is coming out to be all reals greater than or equal to 1. But you know what? The actual domain of this function is what? The actual domain. The real, the complete, the entire domain is what? See, this is a linear polynomial in X. So its domain is set of all reals, isn't it? If you want to find out the range of this function corresponding to its actual complete entire domain, that means you want to find out that when set of all reals is the domain, then what is the range? Again, let's use the graphical approach. When you actually corresponding to the complete x-axis draw its graph, you get a straight line passing through the point 0, 0,1 and minus half comma 0. And as you see the straight line as it is moving from bottom to top, it is actually sweeping all the real numbers along the y-axis from minus infinity to infinity. So the range comes out to be set of all reals. That means when you are inputting the real numbers, all the real numbers inside this machine f, output is all the real numbers. What did you understand from this discussion? Tell me. You had the same machine f, right? When you are changing your inputs, your output is also changing. Okay, yes, corresponding to the actual domain of the function, which is set of all reals, the range is set of all reals. But when you are restricting your domain and making it any smaller, be it non-negative reals, be it whole numbers, be it a finite set consisting of 1, 2, 3, correspondingly, obviously, the range is going to change because the outputs produced are going to change. Yes. Interesting, isn't it? So from now on, please keep in mind whenever you have to find the range of the function, first of all, please ensure what is the domain corresponding to which you want to find the range of the function. Is it the actual entire complete domain or is it some restricted portion of it? Then only proceed to find the range. Okay? Well, you would be wondering that is it always feasible to find the range of a given function by using arrow diagram approach or graphical approach? The answer is no. There is a convenient algebraic approach to find the range of a function. Let's understand that. Now let's take a pause from the questions for a little while and recall the behavior of the square function defined by the rule f of x equals x square, which corresponding to any real number as input produces its square as the output. Yes. In here, the question asks me to find the range of the square function corresponding to set of natural numbers being the domain. Natural numbers happen to be a discrete set. So without any doubt, let's use the arrow diagram approach to find the range. So my first set is set of naturals, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Second set, which is my co-domain, is set of all reals, which has infinitely many members. F is from this domain to this co-domain. Let's examine the mapping. Well, 1 square is 1, so 1 gets mapped to 1. 2 square is 4, so 2 gets mapped to 4. 3 square is 9, so 3 gets mapped to 9. Then 4 square will be 16, so 4 will get mapped to 16 and so on. So now, of course, there are infinitely many members in the domain, so I can't keep drawing the arrows. I can very easily generalize the pattern of the mapping in here. What are you getting as the images? 1, 4, 9, 16, 25 and so on. That means all those natural numbers which are perfect squares are coming out to be the images. So what do you understand from this question? That corresponding to the square function being the machine, when the inputs are natural numbers, the outputs are those natural numbers which are perfect squares. Now I want to find the range of the same function but corresponding to Set of all integers being the domain, which is again a discrete set. So let's again use the arrow diagram approach. Okay, so I have my domain codomain ready. F is a function from Z to R. Well, minus 2 square is 4, so minus 2 gets mapped to 4. Minus 1 square is 1, so minus 1 gets mapped to 1. Square of 0 is 0, so 0 gets mapped to 0. 1 gets mapped to 1 because 1 square is 1. 2 gets mapped to 4 because 2 square is 4. And so on. Again, it's very simple in here to generalize the mapping because domain again consists of infinitely many, many members, so I can't keep drawing the arrows. 
Okay, it's very simple to generalize the mapping. See, zero gets mapped to zero, so zero is the image. Minus one and one both are getting mapped to one, so one is the image. Two minus two both are getting mapped to four, four is the image. Then three minus three both will get mapped to nine. Then four minus four both will get mapped to sixteen, and so on. So what are you getting as the images? Zero, one, four, nine, sixteen, twenty-five, and so on. That means whole numbers which are perfect squares is coming out to be the range. So how is the previous conclusion different from this one? The machine is the same square function. When you are inputting natural numbers, output is all natural numbers which are perfect squares: one, four, nine, sixteen, twenty-five, and so on. When you are inputting integers, then the output gets changed by just one value, which is zero. Yes. Now you start getting getting whole numbers which are perfect squares. Got it? Yes. But try to recall the actual entire complete domain of the square function. What is that? Now the square function is nothing but the polynomial in X, isn't it? So its actual domain is the set of all reals, and corresponding to the set of all reals being its domain, we already know what its range is. Try to recall. We've already studied this. See how do you examine the range by using the graphical approach? Okay, it's not feasible for us to draw the arrow diagram in here. So what will I do? I'll plot the graph of this function corresponding to the complete x-axis. Okay, how? By plotting few points which lie on the graph. We know how that's done. I'll pick up few real numbers from the domain, which is set of all reals as x, and examine f of x corresponding to them. So firstly, I get zero comma zero as a point. Then I get one comma one. Then two comma four. Then minus one comma one. Then minus two comma four. When I join them, this is the graph of the square function corresponding to its complete domain, which is set of all reals representing the x-axis here. Now we have to judge the range of this function graphic graphically, which is something that you already know. Just look at the function as it is moving from bottom to top. When you look at the function when it is moving from bottom to top, it is actually sweeping all the real numbers along the non-negative y-axis from zero to infinity, and that means the range of this function is all the non-negative reals represented by this interval. So this discussion was again made to just emphasize on the fact. That you have the same function, which is the square function, that is the same machine. But as you are changing your inputs, correspondingly outputs produced are changing. That means as you are changing the domain, the range is changing. Okay. For more videos and live lectures on the JEE, click on the subscribe button now.